Good afternoon to you. Thanks for clicking on this long range discussion for the 7th of January. And folks, we've got a tremendous amount of interest uh, regarding the models and what we're seeing with the overall pattern. Of course, we've got a lot of hype on the Facebook page and the blog and whatnot about the changes that we're seeing, the evolution of a changing pattern, large scale and across the hemisphere. And uh, I'm going to just really have a quick look at things and see really what is going on here. Instead of, you know, looking at the map and going, it's going to do this, that, and the next thing, let's have a look and digest. Let's uh, break things down, so to speak, to be able to understand the implications of these changes for later down the road. And I want to urge you folks that while we're seeing an article oscillation start to flip more negative, that, of course, is allowing the release of that very intense built-up article to drift down into the middle attitudes. Once you've got that article playing into that middle attitude flow, folks, boy, watch out uh, across North America and Asia in particular. But we want to see that North Atlantic Oscillation going negative in order for us here in the British Isles, Ireland and Western Europe to see that cold air. Let's have a quick look off the European model. I know it's not very clear and I apologise for that. It's actually looking downwards onto the Northern Hemisphere. What you can see is you've got a very intense pool of Arctic air here over Asia as well as over basically the north of North America but let's skip ahead you've got Europe here modest cold in central and eastern parts of the continent but just look at how cold Asia is at the moment that's quite significant that is the first region that's going to see that frigid Arctic air folks remember the Arctic oscillation has been positive for so long that once you release this Watch out in the middle attitudes. I've been drumming about this since autumn time. Look at here, skipping through the sequence in the next week. Notice how this pool of Arctic air is driving southwards. So through China, the uh, Koreas, into Japan, we're going to be looking at very, very cold temperatures indeed. Even the, the dark blues, the light blues, this is still frigid Arctic air, folks. Don't hone in too much in the purple colour here. It is a very, very cold air mass that's now driving southwards as that Arctic oscillation flips negative. Looking ahead at next Friday, you can see here the expansion of the cold air, the pool of uh, uh, purple and dark blues is expanding. Take note of that. Look at how it starts to drift over the top of Asia. We're going to be seeing changes taking place here, folks. I'm going to explain in a second. Notice here the changes. By the, the Monday the 16th of January, we start to see a splitting apart of this polar vortex here. That is significant to North America. Looking ahead at the pattern once again, I'm going to skip back to the 7th of uh, January. Let's look ahead over the Northern Hemisphere. Once again, that pool of Arctic air over Asia, North America. Look at, as I skip through the sequence, folks, how that pool of purple, deep purple, very frigid air, is actually attaching up, it's joined up as you've got uh, changes with the, the Pacific North America pattern, the PNA is finally starting to go positive. What does that mean for North America? You've got a trough east of Hawaii, ridge up, and it's displacing, breaking apart the trough, it's damming up that Arctic air. We're seeing the changes. I'm going to skip through. I've got a lot of information I'm trying to get through to you folks, so I apologise for the, the missing match of the information. Looking back here, you look at the trough here. That trough is then kicking this Arctic air and keeping it bottled up over the northern part of North America. And that's what we've really been seeing. But skipping through the sequence here, looking at Tuesday next week, notice how the ridge starts to push into North America. So the breaking down of the trough, allowing that ridge, a very mild Pacific air is getting forced all the way up into the Arctic region here. What that's doing is, it's then displacing the Arctic air that's here and pushing it southwards. Look at here, the pool of Arctic air that's now getting driven in on the back side of this area of low pressure. This is the, the first signs. This is next Thursday. Let's skip through next Friday. Look at how the system pushes east dragging that cold air in next Sunday you've got reinforcing cold air do you notice that the displacement from the north 
drifting down into the south. Let's look ahead at next Tuesday. Look at how quick that frigid purple air is now starting to push into the United States. That's because of the ridge of high pressure here, pumping warm air up out of the Pacific into the Arctic and of course as it forces that warmer up it then buckles the jet stream the jet stream intensifies with the contrast between warm and cold as that jet flow becomes stronger it then transports this Arctic air faster down into the United States and what that means is the, the quicker you can displace Arctic air into the south and into the middle latitudes the less it weakens so we've got very very interesting factors at play and uh, what I'm really interested and excited about, folks, is the fact that we have a cross-polar flow. North America, and the United States in particular, sees its coldest air of any winter season when you've got a cross-polar flow. Basically, Asia and Siberia is four times bigger in landmass than Canada is. So therefore, you've got colder air that can settle and build over that region. But once you get a flow, you've got that uh, Pacific Ridge of high pressure building up the western side of North America. That, and, and, and of course, you connect up a cross-polar flow. You get that transport of air from Siberia over the North Pole and into uh, Canada. That and then, that basically in itself uh, intensifies the cold that's over Canada. That, of course, then pushes south in that trough that's going to expand by mid to late next week onwards. Folks, North America, the United States, watch out. You've, you're getting laid into a full sense of security with the warmth that you've seen yesterday. We have a very frigid air mass that's going to be starting to develop into the United States in about 10 days from now. And what we are wanting to watch out for here in the United Kingdom and Ireland is the fact that once you've got that pool of cool trying to really build and expand over the United States, it's going to push eastwards. As it does so, it's going to then pump a ridge of high pressure to the east of the United States. Where is that going to be? That's going to be over the North Atlantic and Greenland. So we could be seeing a deepening of that trough over, uh, of course, over North America. As it does so, like I say, it will then pump a ridge over the North Atlantic. That could in itself suggest then that a trough on the other side of that ridge, basically where we are here in the UK and Ireland, could be seeing the first signs of truly Arctic air pushing in. If you can get that ridge of high pressure to really expand and push right up across Greenland, forcing all that cold air southwards, then we have a chance at seeing something substantial later down the road and I will I do believe later in the month of January we will be later than than what North America is in terms of the cold but we've got that trough east of Hawaii the ridge uh, to the east of that up the, the the western part of North America then of course it feeds that uh, you know that Arctic pile uh, Arctic um, I'm trying to think of the right word <laughs> it basically forces very frigid air southwards into North America and of course the pattern itself will start to buckle more as you're forcing that warmer into the frigid region of the Arctic. We have got a lot of winter folks left and you know don't uh, we, we're still early yet so don't be expecting you know any uh, change. It, it's, put it this way, it's not April next, next month. We're still into the early part of January so there's plenty of winter and plenty of time to see a substantial late part of winter even for here in the UK. Thanks for watching. Hope you're having a terrific weekend wherever you are. Hope uh, this has been uh, digestible. It hasn't been too much. And uh, keep checking back. I'll continue to keep you up to date. Bye for now.